Okay, this is kind of a part two video. It's okay if you haven't seen the first video. In this video, we're going to be going over the craziest variations of Rancor that have ever existed in the Star Wars universe. But if you haven't seen the first video, definitely go watch it to complete the list when you're done with this one. There are so many crazy variations of Rancors in the Star Wars universe, a lot of which were created by ancient Sith alchemy to give them wings or armor or bionic legs. There's even ones that are amphibious and live underwater. In this video, we're going to create the first compilation of every Rancor to exist in the Star Wars universe. If you enjoy the video, please subscribe and give it a like so it does well in the algorithm. But without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. First is the Mutant Rancor. In 2003, the game Jedi Knight Jedi Academy came out. Let me know in the comments if you used to play this. And in this game, there was a Mutant Rancor that a Sith cult creates. This variation definitely falls in between the Force Altered and the Enhanced category. We can assume that the Sith used some sort of dark alchemy to create this Rancor and maybe enhanced it even more with some physical modification. This Rancor was much larger than a normal Rancor and it had green capsules on its back allowing it to breathe in a stream of green toxic gas. Think Bane from Batman, but as a Rancor. He also has massive spines coming out from the back of its head and shoulders and is illuminated with this eerie green glow. Its skin was so thick it was able to deflect blaster bolts as well as lightsaber blows. This made it extremely hard to kill. Eventually you end up pushing a huge crate on a conveyor belt towards it until it's pinned against a ray shield and then gets the big squish. It was also immune to poison due to the venom pods on its back and it moved faster than a normal Rancor. Originally, the Sith planned on releasing it into the city as a distraction so they could steal weapons and credits and whatever else they wanted and of course it got loose and started attacking the Sith themselves who were unable to stop it, most of which get eaten. F in chat boys. Now this next beast is definitely one of the more interesting interesting variations of the Rancor, it has only appeared three different times in the Star Wars universe, or at least has been talked about in three separate books. And honestly, I would love to see an adaptation in a movie, or a video game, or a TV series. I'm not picky, this monster is a nightmare. This is a Tracor. These beasts were a subspecies of Rancor found on the remote world of Socorro. As far as we know, this is an evolved version of the Rancor that naturally mutated to adapt to this environment. These were much smaller than your typical Rancor, and it was actually an aquatic creature that spent most of its life beneath the surface eating fish and other marine animals. Although it was amphibious, it could survive for short periods of time outside the water because it would dehydrate quickly. They also had large tails that resembled something like a serpent type sea creature, which also added a natural weapon to the creature's arsenal that Rancors didn't normally possess. These beasts were exceptionally fast underwater and could overtake their prey in a matter of seconds. They would wait until the moisture rises at night during cool periods and, and use pools on the surface to migrate from one grotto to the next in search of food or a better habitat. These things will sometimes live in groups of two or three and just sit waiting on the edge of the water for unsuspecting prey. As someone in Florida who has a lot of alligators in their backyard who do the exact same thing, a tiny aquatic rancor doing this sounds like something from a nightmare. They could spend up to 24 hours out of water, but after that they have to go back. And from time to time, the pools of water will dry up or drain into lower, inaccessible areas, and then the beasts are forced to migrate. They also have these special water glands along the underside of their neck, allowing them to instinctively figure out the location of the nearest water source up to 10 kilos away. Pretty cool feature to have on these guys, and honestly, probably one of the most different variations from the standard Rancor. Next is another tiny one. This is a pygmy Rancor. It was another smaller subspecies of Rancor, and some bioengineers claim that this subspecies was artificially engineered and they unintentionally escaped out into the wild whereas others said that they were a result of Night Sister magic. The only place besides Star Wars Galaxies where we got to see a pygmy Rancor was in a Star Wars Visionaries comic. There was an Imperial recruitment poster drawn up that featured a woman holding a leash to a pygmy Rancor. Not much context, not sure if she rides it or if it's a pet or if it's an attack dog or what, but these two together on a poster with the text See New Worlds. Peak Imperial propaganda if you ask me. I'm not really sure what they're going for or how this relates to the Empire or being a stormtrooper, but, but I can definitely see it being a pinup on a teen or young adult's wall in the Star Wars universe. And then to follow up the cute tiny little Rancor, we have this monstrosity, the Kaloi Rancor. 
This is the only other known Rancor to have wings. This actually first appeared in 2004 in the Shadows in the Force standalone adventure for the Star Wars role-playing game. It introduced a new mutant Rancor named the Koloi Rancor. This was created by Sith Alchemy and was one of the final bosses that you have to defeat to complete the campaign. The Sith Lord that created him was originally going to use the creature to overthrow the Sith Empire of his time. This was over a thousand years before the Galactic Civil War, and through Sith Alchemy he was able to improve a Rancor's intelligence and give him lighter bones and large wings so that he could fly. He also replaced its skin with black metallic plating that could be used as armor, and he also made all the changes genetic so that he could breed them and create more. More Rancor Nightmares! Yay! By the time he finished perfecting the creature, he was close to death, so he left it in his fortress on Yorgax. He was planning on teaching it how to use blasters and other different weapons, but actually ran out of time, thank goodness. During the Galactic Civil War, the original Sith Lord that created him was reawakened when a ship crashed on Yorgax, and he brought back to life his Koloi Rancor. This is the one that the group of Imperials and Rebels ended up killing before they killed him, and this Rancor was actually, believe it or not a playable character in the Star Wars Connect game. You're able to play as one and rampage through the city of Mos Eisley eating TIE fighters and stomping on stormtroopers. Unfortunately, this wasn't an unlockable playable character to use in the dancing part of the game. Shake my head. I feel like this is an appropriate time to talk about the Rage Rancor though. Rage Rancors were first premiered in the Star Wars mobile game called Star Wars Commander, which is a top-down tower defense game. Rage Rancors are incredibly massive in size and absolute tanks when it comes to taking damage. They get their name from having such a nastier temper than the rest of the Rancors were known for, these Rancors were also incredibly strong and could wipe out an entire base. I would love to see one of these next to a normal Rancor just for comparison. They're also very visibly different with massive horn spikes coming out of the front of their face and along their back was huge armor plated spikes that stick out. No idea how these came to be though since there's not a lot of context behind them in the game but I would definitely assume that these were mutated either naturally or by some mad scientist in a lab somewhere. There was also a Rancor named the Spined Rancor or Spiked Rancor. They were first introduced in 2003 in the Galaxy's MMORPG. There was a Spined Rancor that you could create from a mutated angler. The angler is a giant spider creature native to Yavin 4 that would sit on top of the water and hunt for things right below the surface to eat. In Star Wars Galaxies, if you acquired one of these, you could mutate it to a Rancor and then mutate it again to a spiked Rancor. There was one spiked Rancor you encountered in the game named Gorvo. He was a pet of a Dathomir witch that was a boss fight you come across. As you can see here in the pictures, his spikes in particular were much larger than any we've seen on any other Rancors. These beasts were not natural, these were altered in some sort of way. The game allowed you to mutate them yourself, and with Gorvo it's pretty safe to say that his owner, a Dathomir witch, mutated him with Night Sister magic. And then six years later in 2009, there was a Star Wars Galaxies trading card game that came out with a Night Sister's Revenge expansion pack. And in this game, there was an item you could acquire that was a spined Rancor poster that depicted a way to incubate it, which is weird, but what's even weirder is in the top right hand corner, it shows the Rancor, or maybe a baby Rancor, laying down on all fours, as if that's how they walk before they grow up. It also shows a longer tail with spikes on the end, similar to a dinosaur tail. And around its body, we can see a lot of spikes everywhere compared to a standard Rancor. But next, I want to talk about probably one of the weirdest Rancor variations in all of Star Wars. This is the one that I was talking about that's in its own category because it's so different and I don't know where to put it. This is a Hollow Rancor. In the Old Republic game, they released a never seen before type of Rancor called the Hollow Rancor. This item was available for purchase and would allow you to ride on top of it with a mount. But if you look closely, it's a hologram of a Rancor being projected by the skeleton of a droid underneath it. So cool, so innovative, I really like this and think it's new and fresh. There's not much lore behind it, but I thought it was cool enough to mention in the video just because it's so different from any other slight variations of Rancors. And I'm not sure what purpose it would serve, but you gotta admit, it looks fun to ride. And what way to follow that up than with another Rancor that's completely out of everyone else's league, the Undead Rancor. This one has some of the coolest lore behind it, especially if you've read the book where it all started. These beasts were altered by the Black Wing Virus, which was a synthesized disease created through Sith Alchemy. This disease was created on accident while they were trying to concoct an elixir to achieve immortality. This disease could be spread from contact, or through bites especially. When infected, it immediately spread through the brain first, where it drove the victim into a state of madness, and then it seared through the rest of the body, shutting it down. The flesh would remain animate, 
it, but the subject would no longer be able to feel. Moving forward, they were only living to hunger, to feed and kill. Eventually, all those infected would die. The disease was extremely strong and capable of overcoming almost every traditional method of treatment, making it incredibly difficult to prevent or cure. Has anyone read Death Troopers? Amazing book, by the way, definitely recommend it, but that's the virus that caused all the zombie stormtroopers as well. And in Star Wars Galaxies, they released a Death Troopers update, which included a boss fight that was an undead Rancor. Simply a Rancor who was infected with the Black Wing virus, just like the stormtroopers, and was driven to a state of madness where he could not feel physical pain anymore and literally just wanted to eat everybody in sight. I can only imagine how fun it would be back in the day to take one of these on with all your friends. This next Rancor is absolutely absurd. I've never seen anything like it before and didn't even know it existed until I was researching this video. If you have played the Vader Oculus series, you'll know what I'm talking about, but if you haven't, there is a four-armed Rancor that you have to fight. I have never seen anything like this and I don't know how it came to be. I can only imagine that this thing was created using some kind of force alterations most likely from the Sith. But besides the Book of Boba Fett, this Rancor might be one of the newest Rancors we've seen in the Star Wars universe. And not only is it one of the newest Rancors, it is also one of the most rare, as we have never seen one of these before and there is no information information about it on the internet anywhere. In episode 2, we actually get our first look at a forearm Rancor. You find this Rancor living underneath Vader's castle on Mustafar, and it looks as if he has paint all over his body, like someone's there painting him red. It doesn't look like this one is a pet, or one that is used as a ride. I have no idea where this one came from, but it's one of the coolest Rancors out there. As you can tell, it's much larger than a standard Rancor, and it easily stomps one of the guys to death and absolutely absorbs all the blaster fire as you start cutting off its fingers and eventually force throw a giant rock spear through its chest to kill it. Very cool, so happy they included a new Rancor in this game. If you've played this, let me know in the comments what you thought when you first saw this guy. There was also a Swamp Rancor that existed in the Old Republic game. Like we were saying before, a lot of the variations just had to do with the location they were found in, but this specific one actually had the biggest visual difference. They had two giant elongated horns on top of their head, and of course, it lived in the swamp. I'm not sure what it would use these horns for, maybe fighting with other Rancors or something, but this seems like a natural variation maybe one that's evolved due to living in a different condition. There was also Dathomiri Rancors. Dathomir is the Rancor's home planet. These were basically a classification of all the Rancors that live specifically on Dathomir. A lot of them could be found in their own rude villages, which just consisted of a few huts or logs or thatch, or in villages and towns with the witches of Dathomir. The Rancors and the witches had a super close relationship that borders cultural symbiosis. Some Rancors partner themselves with individual witches. The partnerships were for life, and the Rancor would serve as the witch's mount, companion, and protector. Basically, like a big guard dog. Of course, the thing could eat people. A lot of these Rancors were very intelligent, and most of the more intelligent ones would not be paired with witches because there was just too many Rancors on the planet. The Rancors outnumbered the witches by more than 10 to 1. Some of the witches would even share their own dwellings with the Rancors. The villages of the unpartnered Rancors were often built nearby the villages of the witches so that they could seek aid from the witches. Rancor herd mothers would actually go to the witches for advice and for help with Rancors that had become ill. In return, the wild Rancors would work with the partnered Rancors to help the witches defend their villages and use their strength to help clear the land, build roads, and perform other similar tasks for the witches. Foolish hunters occasionally traveled to Dathomir for the challenge of hunting Rancors, but the Rancors and the witches dealt with them very harshly. There were few left that were not eaten. Any Rancor that was of high intelligence that did not live on Dathomir was usually found in the company of a witch who decided to travel off-world. If anyone was to threaten or harass a witch, they would have to deal with her Rancor's wrath, aka get eaten. Rip. Now, the last two Rancors are actually some of the craziest force-altered variations and go hand in hand with each other. This one is probably the weirdest Rancor on the list. This is the Tarent Attack. These beasts lived on Kashyyyk along with the Wookiees. They were much smaller than standard Rancors and were derived from ancient Sith alchemy. These were originally introduced through Knights of the Old Republic and later mentioned in the Clone Wars. They had massive claws and huge tusks that were poisonous. Their back had numerous spines growing out of it and pairs of flaps or tusks 
attached to their mouths. These beasts were said to have had a very strong connection to the dark side of the Force. This species fed on the blood of those who were strong in the Force. Maybe they just liked the midichlorians, who knows? They often could be found living in caves and tombs that were strong in the dark side of the Force. Ancient Sith Lord Exar Kun reported to create these through Sith alchemy. He then used the beasts to destroy the Jedi's outposts on Tatooine, Kashyyyk, and Tython. Believe it or not, Count Dooku was once Master Yoda's apprentice. When he was much younger, he and Yoda went to the planet Kashyyyk, and on it, they encountered a Tarentatech, which Yoda had to fight. Kind of cool, wish we could have seen a clip from this somewhere maybe in the TV show or something, that would be pretty neat. There was also a variation of the Tarentatech called a Tarentatech Mauler that was the largest Tarentatech ever seen. This beast could be found guarding the tomb of the ancient Sith Lord on the planet Korriban. Ancient stories reported Tarentatech like creatures that were twisted in the dark ways of the Force roaming around on Korriban. These creatures are one of the most dangerous in the galaxy simply due to their unusual resistance to Force powers. Over time, Jedi had tried to wipe them out across the galaxy, but the creatures prevailed. Jedi would go on hunts, killing as many as possible, but unfortunately, many Jedi Masters died doing this. I feel like this would make for a sick TV series or graphic novel or CGI series. I don't know if live action could do it justice. Maybe something like the KOTOR CG trailers, that would be cool to see this in. These creatures were known to hibernate and go dormant for many years, only to return when the dark side was strong in the galaxy. Many think that these were highly altered rank rancors who underwent many dark force experiments. To defeat them, it would require using a lightsaber or other conventional weapons. These were literally Jedi killers bred by the Sith. I don't know how they did it, but they were basically immune to force effects. During the Great Hunt, Jedi with the strongest force bonds would have to go out in pairs to hunt down and kill these beasts. They needed strength in the group to withstand the dark influence in the lairs of these beasts. And even when the Jedi exterminated a large portion of these, the waxing in the dark side would trigger even more to come out of hibernation and repopulate the galaxy. It was a lose-lose scenario. They would go out and hunt the beasts to kill them off, and in turn, lose a lot of Jedi Masters. And when a lot of the beasts were killed, it would trigger the others in the galaxy to go out and repopulate even more. In 2005, Star Wars Tales issue 23 came out. There's a story called Shadows and Light, which is about three Jedi Masters roaming across the galaxy on a hunt to kill any Sith spawn. More specifically, to rent attacks. Two of the Jedi fall in love, and the other disapproves and leaves them to hunt on his own. He actually went on to encounter the Tarentatech known as the Great Beast that the local Wookiees would use as a coming of age test to go fight and prove their worth in combat, but very few survived the encounter. Just the same, the Jedi was killed, and then later the two in love encounter one, but because one of them had fallen to the dark side, she was unable to use her weapon, and they both perished as well. It's a really cool read, I definitely recommend this story, it's very short, but it's a cool piece. Just Jedi hunting down Sith altered beasts across the galaxy. I really enjoyed it. And then last is actually the beast that the Tarentatech was created from, the Tarenta. These appeared in Dawn of the Jedi Order, the Prisoner Bogdan, Issue 2. These creatures were created by a Jedi Master, the Order before the Jedi we were talking about earlier that allowed themselves to use a mix of the light side and the dark side to become stronger in battle. These beasts were created during the Despo War to sense the enemy's explosives. These look very similar to standard Rancors, and although it's not sure exactly what beast was used to create them, I think it's pretty safe to say the closest one we can assume they were morphed from was a Rancor. Unfortunately, it didn't go as planned and they were later seen roaming Bogan. What an absolute roller coaster. Comment down below which one of these is your favorite Rancor or give me your top three. And if you haven't seen it yet, go watch the first video so you get the complete list and tell me if you enjoy the videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one soon. Don't get eaten by a Rancor and remember, the Force will be with you always.